guys, we're here with WTF Car Reviews, and today we're gonna be reviewing this all new 2023 Acura MDX Tech. And huge thanks to Ken and Brandon at Regal Acura in Lakeland, Florida for making this review possible. They have an impressive dealership, I'll leave a link to it below. And if you're looking for a new premium vehicle in the Florida area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for Brandon. And for those of you guys who don't know, the MDX has been Acura's midsize luxury three row crossover since 2001. That's when the first generation was released. The fourth generation that you see here was all new for last year, 2022. And for 2023, it's available in six different trim levels and two different engine options. Starting with the base front wheel drive at $49,050, we get standard LED lighting, 19 inch rims, 12.3 inch HD center display, panoramic moonroof, tri-zone climate control, and wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto standard on a base Acura MDX. You can upgrade about 4,000 bucks to the tech. That includes navigation, ELS Studio 12 speaker sound system, premium leather interior, rain sensing wipers, front and rear parking sensors, and power folding side mirrors. There's also the A-Spec and Advanced package, but those are only available in all-wheel drive, but the base and tech are available in either front-wheel drive or super handling all-wheel drive. There's also the all-new Type S, which comes equipped with the new three liter twin turbo V6 and the Type S Advance, which is the top of the line Acura MDX. But here we have the front wheel drive Acura MDX tech with a base price of 53,750 bucks. What do we get for that money? Let's jump right in. So up front, you notice your blacked out grill and LED daytime running lights, full LED for the headlights too. I'm really liking this front end design, a little bit of shiny chrome surrounding the blacked out grill area. And the Acura badge has a nice smoked out theme to it too. Full front parking sensors for the tech, a little bit more chrome in the corners. Not a huge fan of those fake air ducts in both of the corners. I kind of wish they made them functional. I believe for the Type S they are functional, but this silver metallic paint is absolutely beautiful. I'll leave a link right here to show you exactly the name of this paint color, but the metallic really pops in this Florida sun. The wheel and tire setup is impressive. Here we get these beautiful Y-spoke rims, gunmetal gray and silver contrasted. These are 20s wrapped in Bridgestone Alenza all season tires. Dimensions are a square setup, 255, 50 R20s for the front and rear. A Little bit of plastic cladding surrounding the wheel well area continues along for the rocker panel. A Little bit of shiny chrome above that little bit of shiny chrome for the lower part of the mirror, which has a nice two-tone contrast. LED turn signal on the mirror itself. No blind spot monitoring on the glass, but we do get blind spot monitoring. I'll show you where it is inside. I have to start the car up because my camera already overheated. It's like 100 degrees today in Lakeland, Florida. But we get smart access for all four doors. Push to open gas cap, which is a nice feature. Easy fill. We can do 87 octane fuel if you want in this 3.5 liter V6. Out rear, uh, still the same 20 inch rims. The only difference is a smaller brake caliper, more that shiny chrome in the back. LED taillights, turn signals, and reverse lights. Shout out Regal Acura in Lakeland, Florida for making this review possible. Full rear parking sensing. We don't get a 360. The 360 is reserved for the advanced trim level, but still nice to get front and rear parking sensors, dual exhaust tips, and a pretty aggressive rear styled area. Overall, we'll take a squat back here, take a look at the exhaust tips themselves and the rear suspension setup. But speaking of the exhaust tips, let's fire up. Well, it's already fired up, but let's rev up this 3.5 liter V6 and hear how she sounds. All right, guys, that was the sound of the 3.5 liter V6 sold by Acura for the 2023 MDX Tech. And it sounds pretty decent for what it is, cranking out 290 horsepower, 267 pound-feet of torque, enough to get this three-row SUV to 60 in the low six-second range. I believe car and driver tested it at 6.3, made it to a 10-speed automatic transmission. But what you see is basically what we get. I'm appreciative of the struts. Definitely makes it easier to open and close the hood. And speaking of closing the hood, let's do exactly that. And we'll take one more step back, get a good look at the front styling and Let's check out the interior on this 2023 MDX Tech. A little bit of shiny chrome surrounding the window trim, if I didn't mention that earlier, but taking a step inside, soft touch up top, aluminum beneath that, aluminum door handle, three-person memory seats, leather for the center portion, leather for the armrest two, ELS Studio sound system, auto one touch for all four, power folding mirrors, four-way adjustable tailgate release. The bottom portion is not soft touch, solid graining material though, no felt in the inside. You'll fit a six-inch sub and a 24-ounce water bottle right 
next to it. Stepping inside, the seats are beautiful. With the tech, we get these genuine leather seats, great bolstering, a little bit of perforation in the center for the butt and back area. They're heated, not ventilated seats. The ventilated seats are available on the higher trims. Four-way lumbar control, you can recline, drop, lift, and slide the seats. Taking a step inside though, we can really check it out. So foot on the brake, we can see everything come to life. Engine start stop, nice. So we get the 12.3 inch, okay, we're gonna have to turn this air down by a couple as soon as I see where. Okay, so we get the 12.3 inch touchscreen and a 12.3 inch digital gauge display. The digital gauge display is the first thing we notice. We're currently in normal mode. We get about a 66, 6500 RPM tack. And on the right side, we have 160 mile an hour speedometer, digital speedo in the center. These buttons adjust the right side where we have the adjustments. We can go between maintenance, tire pressure, G meter, driver attention level, uh, safety support, and the gauge settings. So gauge settings, we can do speed, distance units, and the layout. We can go back and as far as trip computer, you can go between A or B, navigation to maintenance, and we already saw all that. My personal favorite to look at at all times would probably just be this G meter, and depending on what drive modes we're in, it does change up. So right now we're normal, you can go into comfort, we get a nice blue display, you can see sport, everything gets a lot more aggressive. So we'll start this review off in normal, transition into sport and comfort, just to see what the differences are. So let's put it into normal mode. So the steering wheel itself, very thick, great 10 to bolstering notches, nine and three fits your hand just about perfectly. Plastic paddle shifters, the Acura area, the horn area is rubberized, the horn, pretty aggressive sounding horn, people should definitely be getting out of your way. It's the left side power, volume adjustments, you can skip your songs, voice commands, return, and the apps. The steering wheel is a power tilt and telescope. To the left of it, interior lighting, 360 sensing, traction control, you can turn off your parking sensors if you like to for one reason or another. Electronic parking brake, hood latch release down low, and you can get a good look at your pedals. The dashboard is all leather stitch trim. I'm not really liking how the touchscreen caves into the dashboard. It's not the best when it comes to glare. I'm sure it's pretty tough for you guys to see it right now. We can take a quick look at the navigation screen once the map loads up. Cool. All right, so the screen itself, pretty high resolution. It's kind of tricky with this trackpad. I'm not really the biggest fan of it, but I'm sure any owner gets used to it after like about a week or two. Pretty high resolution, you can see gas stations, coffee shops, restaurants, all that. If you wanna return, just press this return button. We also have a home button that you can press and it returns you to the home screen. We get shortcuts, system updates, AccuraLink, Alexa, AM, radio, Android Auto, and Apple CarPlay, which are both wireless. We can hop out of here. My personal favorites look at at all times would probably just be this navigation screen. Um, really, overall, not a big fan of the trackpad, but again, you will get used to it. Dual zone, auto climate control, heated seats, no cooled seats, unfortunately. Dynamic mode, we already went over all the drive modes. Electronic gear selector with sport mode. Backup camera, we can get a quick look at it. So very high resolution, we get guidance lines and trajectory, 360 sensing front and rear, no 360 camera. We have multiple different views. I forgot that it's not a touch screen. We have a more narrow view, over the top view, and uh, I'm not quite sure what that view is because it doesn't really change anything up. My personal favorite is just the standard view. Throw it right back into park. The screen immediately returns right back to the screen we were at. Auto start stop, we can disable that for the purpose of this review. Our charge ports, USB-C and USB ports. I'll turn this air down by one more because I think it might be kind of tough for you guys to hear. Volume adjustment is a great spot for your passengers and for the driver, how it's right next to this little hand spot. We get the skip controls too, good spot for the passengers, good spot for your keys in this cubby. Two cup holders with the pushy things should help keep your drinks in place. Wireless charging pad, that's nice with a little hand rest right above it. Gushy soft center console armrest area, super, super soft. Two tier storage, you can fit some coins and business cards. Pens too, second tier storage, you can see, pretty large, not the largest, but you'll fit a six pack of 20 ounce water bottles with no issues, USB port, and an additional 12 volt power outlet. We can shut this console right up. The glove box, the latch, uh, opens up a damped and felt lined glove box. It's not the largest, but I would still expect you to fit between 20, 25, maybe 30 license plates. The surrounds of it are soft touch, leather trim right above it. A Little bit of piano black for the center portion, but overall very clean looking interior. Auto dimming rear view mirror, garage home link settings are on it. Interior lights are LED. We have a panoramic moonroof to open up the shade. You just double click and the shade opens. Sunglass holder, nice. And as soon as the shade opens, the roof should also follow it. It does not, so we have to actually 
push and hold and the roof goes right above the second panel of glass. We'll see how far it opens up. Not too far, see if it goes any further. It does. Wow, so that's actually very far. It goes well into the second row. We can poke our way out of here. Pretty hot day today in Lakeland, Florida. It's sunny and 97 degrees according to this Acura MDX. So we can definitely close this moonroof up. We'll leave the shade open so when we hop out back, you can get a good idea of how much light is brought into the cabin thanks to the moonroof. And if I happen to miss any features, let's get a quick look at this window sticker and just see everything that's available on the 2023 Acura MDX Tech. The exterior color is lunar silver metallic with a gray stone interior. Mechanically 290 horsepower, 3.5 liter VTEC V6, 10 speed auto paddle shifters and electric power steering, which feels extremely light. We'll test it out between normal comfort and sport and see if the steering gets a little bit heavier. So all the standard equipment on an MDX, you can see to the left, the tech gets you accurate navigation system with voice recognition, accurate ELS studio premium audio with 12 speakers, ambient lighting, second row sunshades, rain sensing wipers, front and rear parking sensors, low speed braking control and power folding side mirrors. Acura watch features too. Total price after an $1,195 destination is a tick under 55,000 bucks. 22 combined MPGs, 19 city, 26 on the highway. You can put this window sticker right back. Pretty loaded vehicle for the under $55,000 price point. We can check out the back seat real quick, see how much space is offered back there. Well, before we do that, check out the windows. I believe they're dual pane. They are dual pane, so the interior should be extremely, extremely quiet. Out rear, the materials up top are soft touch. We get second row sunshades for the tech package, leather for the center, leather for the armrest, auto one touch for the window. We get an aluminum door handle, ELS speaker. The bottom portion's hard plastic to be expected. You'll fit a six inch sub and a big gulp right next to a very large coat holder. The rear seats will unbutton the seat belts. You get the same gray stone color seats as up front. Very soft perforated for the butt and back portion. You can recline and slide the seats as well. Taking a step inside, I'm a little bit over six feet tall, sitting behind my seat settings, and I still have a decent amount of space. My feet are starting to get a little bit close to the front seat, but I have at least two, three inches of knee room, and you can slide the seats. So they go further back, and now I have plenty of space for both my feet and my knees. Headroom. I still have about an inch or two before my head will start to touch. We get map pockets behind both of the front seats. Third zone climate, no heated or ventilated seats out rear, but not a big deal. Power outlet, 12 volt, nice two USB ports. And right next to it is a empty space. So I guess the higher trims get an AC adapter back here as well. The center cubby, I'm not quite sure how we are going to fold it down with just one hand, but it looks like we figured it out. The seatbelt's kind of in the way. We get two cup holders, nice soft stitching for the arms so you can fit two full-size arms back here. To lift it back up, you simply, I'll try to boost it with my knee because with one hand, it's pretty tough. But overall, really impressive back seat. The lighting is, I can't see, but I'm going to assume that it's LED since it's LED up front. Tunnel light brought into the cabin thanks to this massive panoramic moonroof. Frameless rear view mirror, if we didn't mention, I'm pretty sure I did mention it, I'm not quite sure why I brought it back up. But that's about it for the back seat. Let's hop out into the third row real quick, see how much space is offered back there, and then take this 2023 MDX out for a drive. So already I can tell I'm not fitting back here. There's absolutely no chance that I'll have enough space, but I already told you guys that I will do it, so I'm a man of my word. Let's hop back here. Oh my God, yeah, this is one of the tightest back seats I have ever been around oh yeah we knew it um yeah so the mdx is not very functional for full-size adults headroom wise my head's only starting to rub so i guess for short trips i can figure it out i'll deal with i'll deal with it back here for up to like 30 minutes after the 30 minute point i think i'm going to start freaking out back here we get a tiny little cup holder solid size window to look out of for the rear passengers but what you see is really what you get the interior lighting just like in the second row you cannot see it uh, so we can press this button free up my knees Hop out of here and then take a quick look at the cargo space and then take this 2023 MDX out for a drive. So to open up the cargo underneath the Acura badge, we have a button and a power opening tailgate. As soon as the tailgate opens up, we will check it out. So even with the third rows up, you have a decent amount of cargo space. I kind of wish they gave us like maybe like an inch or two less of cargo space. They gave us an inch or two more of third row usability. We have some secret storage beneath. You can remove this whole tray and have like an additional three or four cubic feet of trunk space and so your grocery bags aren't flying around nearly as badly. We can fold these third row seats down, see how much overall 
cargo space we have. We'll take a step back and it's a nice amount of space. We get wheel well cutouts on the left side. This is also perfect for garbage bags, not garbage bags, grocery bags, sorry. 12 volt right next to it. You can fold those rear seats down. It looks like uh, 40, 40, 20. And I would expect you to fit up to a 70, 75 inch TV back here with no issues. We can shut this trunk right up by pressing the button. Take one more step back. Get a quick walk around, one last walk around of this 2023 Acura MDX Tech. The segment's really been heating up lately and the MDX still is extremely competitive with top level luxury SUVs while still saving you quite a few thousands of dollars. But that's about it guys, let's take it out for a drive. All right guys, now we've just about seen everything we need to see with the inside and outside of this all new 2023 Acura MDX Tech front wheel drive. Let's take it out for a drive. And the first thing I notice is even in normal mode, the steering is unbelievably light. The MDX has always had very light steering. This is one of the lightest steerings I have ever felt. The throttle feels very sensitive. The MDX has also, also had a very sensitive throttle, at least for the 3.5 and 3.7 liter V6s. Taking a step out, the steering wheel is a little bit far away from me, but we can pull a little bit closer and with this power tilt and telescope, very convenient but yeah this steering is ridiculously light it's like it's like you're just flinging it around this this reminds me of when a car is like on a lift and the wheels are just hanging off freely and you start turning the wheel this is how light it feels it's like they're not even connected to the road but taking a step out here about third throttle yeah yeah although the steering is light the handling is still good responds quickly not bad we'll try it out in sport because again this steering is ridiculously light. Yeah, it tightens up a little bit in sport. Not by much though. We can slow down right over here. Try out an acceleration off the line. We're not gonna floor because we'll just roast the tires, but half throttle, let's go. Wow, okay, so it definitely picks up speed well. No wheel spin either off the line. I feel like it had like active torque management where it sent the power to the proper wheel. It felt very refined and smooth. Um, obviously 290 horsepower, 267 pound-feet of torque. There's a decent amount of power going directly to the front wheels, but throwing through the turns, limited body roll. And in sport, yeah, the steering definitely tightens up a little bit, uh, but it's still a very light steering rack, which I'm sure most people that are looking for a luxurious vehicle, they prefer a light steering rack. Maybe not this light, but I'm sure most customers that are looking for a luxury car prefer light steering over heavy. Also in sport, the transmission gets a lot more sensitive. It's more eager to downshift and it's a lot less eager to have you in the overdrive gears, but it still lets you use overdrive. If you're like not on the gas for more than 30 seconds, it will downshift you to like seventh or eighth gear. It's just not very eager to do so. But one more time on the gas. Not bad. It's almost like an extra surge after 4,500 RPM. That's kind of like a known characteristic for VTEC engines. Not bad. We'll try the paddle shifters out on the way back. Nice little rev match downshift third gear. Not a whole lot of torque. We can try out this vehicle's turning radius right here. Not bad. And on the gas. <laughs> it's pretty quick guys. It's not gonna blow you away in terms of speed. The Type S definitely makes more power, but you'll do zero to 60 in the mid six second range. Definitely nothing to complain about. And for the segment it's in midsize three row SUV, six and a half seconds to 60 is a very respectable time. We'll continue with these paddles, throw the transmission into S and just see what the differences are. Third gear, yeah. Not a whole lot of low-end, mid-range torque. Up top, it feels strong. Like, here, second, if it lets me. Yeah, it's, it feels like there's a delay. So again, it's not a sporty vehicle. I'll throw it right back into comfort mode. That's what this car is all about. Throw the transmission into regular D and just cruising along. Wow, it's very quiet. Throwing it in. This, the response is instant. It's on center. The SUV changes directions well. I just wish they added a little bit more weight. So take notes, Acura, for 2024. Just make the steering feel like 
20, 25% heavier, just to let the driver know a little bit of what's going on. But overall, this is a great luxury SUV. The isolation from the road is excellent with these dual pan windows. Listen, nothing. Absolutely silent, no wind noise, no road noise. It's like you're driving on a cloud, literally. It's like you're not even on the road because it's just, whatever. I'm not gonna keep complaining about it. Overall, if you're looking for a luxury three row SUV, the MDX has always been the on the top of the list for most consumers because for under $55,000, you have just about everything you could possibly want or need. I kind of wish we had more power if we had a detuned version of a three liter twin turbo that made about like 320 horse, 330 torque as a base engine, and then you can upgrade to the Type S, which also should make more power if the Type S made about the same numbers as say an Explorer ST. These would be the two best vehicles in the segment, par none. For a three row SUV, I genuinely think the MDX handles one of the best. The new Ford Explorer also handles absolutely fantastically, but the MDX, it just feels more premium. This is a very premium feeling vehicle. If you're in the market for a three row luxury SUV, you don't wanna spend over $55,000, I would 100% recommend checking out the 2023 Acura MDX Tech. And a huge thanks to Brandon and the rest of the management and staff here at Regal Acura in Lakeland, Florida for making this review possible. I'll leave a link to your inventory below. And if you're in the Lakeland area looking for a new car or SUV, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for Brandon. And huge thanks to all of you guys for watching. I had a great time making this video. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much. You guys know the channel is just not possible without you guys. And I really appreciate the constant support. But again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Leave a like too. It really helps me out the YouTube algorithm. That's how these videos get promoted to new people. Leave a comment. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like. Leave a comment. Let me know if there's any specific cars, SUVs, or trucks you'd like to see reviewed on this channel. And I'll definitely try to get those videos for you as soon as possible. But other than that, again, thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope all of you have a great day.